In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a tube of oil paint. The process for making other kinds of paint is very similar, but for oil paint, the only ingredients you need are the pigment and the oil. Pigments are the material that give paint its color. In this video, we will be using oil as a binder. The binder does just that. It takes the particles of pigment and binds them first to each other, and then when you paint, to the surface that you're painting on. For example, a canvas. You can't use just anything for a pigment, but what makes a good pigment and how they are prepared and made into a convenient powder is another story. In this video, I'm just going to give you the basics of how to turn a dry powdered pigment and oil into a tube of oil paint. The particles of pigment can be very small, and if you just stirred in the oil, you would have something kind of like pancake batter, where there would be clumps of dry pigment that didn't have oil around them. That might be fine for pancakes, since flour absorbs the water while they cook, but for making paint, clumps of dry pigment would make a terrible paint. The goal is to get all the particles surrounded by the oil. Different pigments need more or less oil. When you make your own paint, you really get to know the properties of the pigments you're using. You get a more intimate understanding of the various paint colors. To get the process started, we do just mix the oil and pigment with a palette knife. You can see here that after the oil and pigment have been mixed with the palette knife, it's not paint yet. It's too lumpy and grainy, not at all like the finished paint will be. The glass thing I'm using is called a muller. The muller squishes the pigment and oil together. If you don't rock the muller a little bit, so, so much suction can develop that it can be hard to get the muller to detach from the sheet of glass. It's not rocket science, but when using a molar, you have to strike a balance between letting enough friction develop that all the pigment particles get squished and coated with oil and not letting too much suction develop to where you can't even move the molar or get it off the glass. This action of using the molar to squish together the pigment and binder is called grinding. The same action that gets the pigment thoroughly coated with the oil can actually break down the pigment into smaller particles at the same time. With commercially made pigments, the pigments are usually already so tiny that grinding with a molar is probably not gonna make the particles any smaller. But with a homemade pigment like the ones I'm using in this video, this grinding of the oil and pigment actually can at the same time break the pigment particles into smaller bits. These photos show a few different pigments once they have been subjected to grinding with the molar. Notice how much smoother they are than when we began. You can also see how the molar has squished them into a very thin film on the surface of the glass. This is why grinding paint is so time consuming. You can't do a lot at a time. The larger your glass, the more room you have to literally spread out as you grind. Also, some pigments have a larger or small, smaller particle size, and so the thickness of the paint film on the glass will vary. Once the oil and the pigment are ground together and smooth, it's time to scrape what is now paint off the glass and put it into the tube. Most people are curious how you get paint into a tube. The secret is to buy empty tubes that are open at the back end. In a factory with a mill, this would be a very different process, but when you hand grind paints, you just scrape them off the glass and then scrape the paint into the back of the tube. You can't fill the whole length of the tube. You have to leave enough space at the back end to crimp it. 
I really like this big scraper. I try to pinch the back end of the tube first with my hands and then with the scraper, pulling the scraper to the end to flatten it. Then I take a needle-nosed pliers and turn over the edge. Trying to get it to roll evenly isn't easy, but I do two or three turns at the end before turning the pliers and nipping down the turned under ends. The finishing touch is a label. You don't have to do this. You can just label the tubes with a Sharpie if that's what you want. But I like to have the paint sample and then the name of the pigment and when I made the paint on the finished tube.